Hey there, Devin Rex for Art here. Today we're going to be doing a page in my steampunk journal. I was inspired by this um, wrap that was um, around some flowers I received. It's kind of plasticky, uh, so it was interesting to work with. So here I'm attempting to add some gold to uh, one of the circles that I cut out from that uh, using this stencil and um, this Mona Lisa adhesive size uh, by Speedball. It says use adequate ventilation, avoid breathing vapor, avoid skin contact, close bottle after usage. So safety first, so I suited up to do this. Um, and it did say to use just a thin layer, avoid pooling. Um, do not leave puddles, apply leaf when adhesive dries, color will change from milky to clear, which, took, which takes about 30 minutes. Clean brush immediately after with soap and water. So I used an old brush and I cleaned it well. So here you see, because uh, it was so thin, I did see under the stencil and did puddle a bit, so I just sopped up some of those puddles. Um, let it dry. They required time. Here I am uh, trying to clean off that stencil and I did clean it more than what's showing up here. It's quite sticky. So you can see the pattern slightly there and um, I use these uh, Cosmic Shimmer Gilding Flakes. Uh, the color is Harvest Moon. So you just pull them out of the little pot and pop them on there and they're so light and fluffy they um, it's quite messy uh, you don't sneeze when you're using this stuff because it'll go flying so here I'm just rubbing it on and applying it to that paper and it did stick down very well and I'm just using my finger to burnish it down and I took my time and added quite a bit here I'm just removing the excess uh, gold leaf and uh, yeah, it kind of floats around. So I'm still burnishing it down with my finger and the brush, making sure it adheres really well. And um, even though it wasn't a perfect copy of that stencil, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, nice and shiny. Um, I like, I'm gonna really like that pop of red on my page. So it's um, quite pretty, I like it. It's actually multicolored. It's got little flecks of copper and pink and yellow and orange and it's um, very lovely. So next I decide to pull up my jelly plate and um, do a technique that uh, Patty Tolly Parish invented using um, these gilding flakes on the jelly plate and Kathy Berg one time used a stencil and really packed it full of the flakes or she had gold leaf I think but I just use my flakes and I fill up uh, the whole stencil and now I'm trying to pick it up with some matte medium and uh, see if I can get it to adhere to that red paper um, to see if I can get a crisper image of that stencil. Um, however, um, it doesn't really work, you'll see in a minute, but um, I did like my roll-off sheet, um, the little flecks of the um, flakes, flecks of flakes came off um, onto that white paper, and I do end up using that in a different project another day, which um, turned out quite nice, but I didn't use that white paper in today's project. And you'll see in a second here when I try to, oh, there's that paper when I try to take off the red paper it doesn't stick like none of it sticks it's just too slippery it's not absorbent enough so that was a fail but I still had all these lovely uh, bits on the jelly plate so I pulled up a print with the matte medium and this um, thin craft colored paper and um, I didn't use that either but um, I I did play with this a few more times um, with some black and um, some red and I didn't show all of the prints I took from that. Um, this one was quite striking and I thought I might use it in this project but you'll see later I don't end up using it but I used uh, one of the papers that I didn't end up filming. So next I decide to do an image transfer um, with a little bit of flake still on the plate and I use a magazine image with a high contrast image, use some um, dark paint. Um, I've seen other techniques but today I'm just using the, um, I think it's a Liquitex Basic Mars Black and I just roll it on really thinly. Uh, for this part of the video, I'm just going to keep it on real time so you can see um, how long it takes to do this process. So now 
I'm happy with the coating of the black paint. I'm just putting the magazine image down, just gently um, patting it down, not for very long, uh, just enough for the paint to resist um, the ink. And you can see when you pull it up, you see the image of the face there. Now, because there is some flex on the um, jelly plate, it's not a super crisp image. I was slightly concerned about that black smudge um, just above her lips by her nose there so I'll just take my finger and just kind of like rub it out to try to um, make it less noticeable and because I had done different layers before I'm not sure where that black paint layer came from that's by her nose but it doesn't matter this is an unpredictable technique um, I didn't invent this technique obviously um, there's lots of different videos um, one video I found quite helpful because um, she walked you through errors and just kind of problem solving was um, Kathy Berg's hangout and art in the morning with Norma and um, Norma is a lovely lady and she does a lot of these um, transfers. She doesn't have a YouTube channel but she was a guest on Kathy's channel so I'll link uh, that episode below. So now I'm doing my pickup print with um, this PBO paint. It's um, an iridescent blue-green and it's translucent so it's very pretty. So here you have to make sure that the black paint is totally dry so that's why I left it on um, regular time like regular speed. So now I just added a thin coat of the blue paint and while it's still wet you do your pickup print. So I did this on white cardstock and just giving it a really um, adequate time to pick up all that paint, giving it a good rub. So I find doing this image transfer technique is really hit or miss. So while you're rubbing and trying to get all the um, image to absorb, you're really uh, just kind of wishing and hoping that it works. So I'm gonna peek at a corner. It looks like it's picked everything up. So I pull it off and um, even though it's not a perfect print, I'm happy enough with it because this is a sort of, I'm going for a grungy look and steampunk look. The um, eyes aren't totally perfectly visible, but I'll deal with that a little bit later. So here I've got all my um, different elements that I've gathered got this little cog that I cut out of this uh, piece from a Stamperia paper. Um, I believe it's a Jules Verne type collection. I don't know the exact name. So I cut out that little piece and I thought that would um, be a nice element to cover up that eye. So there I'm showing the piece of paper I cut it from. So I thought it would cover up that eye that's not very visible and be kind of a mechanical steampunk look to it. This card is cut from the same paper. Apparently it's a Jules Verne quote. It says, Ah, women, how incomprehensible are your feminine hearts. When you are not the timidest, you are the bravest of creatures. So um, I'm just sort of showing all the different elements I'm gonna add. These are um, some hot air balloons that I use my Stampin' Up stamps to um, emboss using some Seth Apter ancient amber embossing powder and the larger balloon had some magicals on it. It was just on tracing paper and the magical color there was Tibetan poppy teal. So my background paper is already in my steampunk journal, um, which is a collection of jelly prints that I'm using. This paper was a loose leaf paper that was a scrap paper that I used to brayer off leftover paint and I had added some stamps and I glued it down onto um, a piece of cardstock that was in my jelly print book and I had fixed it with that red strip on the side. That was actually some packing tape transfer I'd done um, in a cleanup uh, of my jelly plate um, during the jelly plate challenge that Bridget Coopson had hosted. And here I'm just gluing down all the elements. I thought the wing heart was appropriate with the quote and that again was on tracing paper and embossed with that same Seth Apter powder. So I'm using matte medium to glue everything down. And um, I like the silicone, uh, it's not really a brush, it's a silicone, almost a spatula, 
because uh, with the matte medium, it's very easy to clean. You just wipe it off. Um, I find bristles are just, with glue, they just get so caked and difficult to clean. So I usually like to use that silicone um, handled thing when I can. It's, um, I think it's a Finnabar. I painted the handle uh, turquoise because it the paint had come off and um, it's also nice because it's quite firm so it helps to get out all the bubbles when you're gluing things down um, and the nice thing about the tracing paper is it almost disappears this is actually B tracing paper uh, that I ordered in a roll uh, recommended by Shauna Musin and here so I'm gonna bring down the air balloons up in the top corner and my transfer image we're going to put in the middle. Again, getting out my handy dandy silicone. Oh, here I'm just sanding the edges to make it a bit more distressed. And I'm happy with that. So um, this time I'm using, because it's a cardstock, it's a bit thicker, I'm using some Aline's Tacky Glue, putting quite a bit on there. Um, and then my glue stick I use to spread it out rather than using my fingers and getting my fingers all sticky. So I'm putting that down and uh, just kind of put a piece of paper over top of it to really burnish it down, get it to lie flat. was kind of coming up so just you can just pop in some more glue and rub it back down and what are we doing next so I believe oh I didn't think it was um, grungy enough there was some white spot showing and I wanted to just blend in that heart uh, with the uh, wings a little bit more so just use some black craft paint to do that And I'm um, just going to distress the edges of this card I had cut out from that Jules Verne paper. Sorry, it's a bit off camera there. I think I'm just looking for supplies at this point. So we've got some black distress ink, um, that blue PBO paint. I'm just adding some color to the surface. And then the inking the edges of the card so it pops out a bit more and some walnut I think it's walnut stain distress ink with the blender sometimes I don't grab the handle I'm too lazy and I just use the um, the blender just with some washi tape that I use to attach it to the bottom of the um, the ink pad and here I'm just fiddling just trying to make it look aged and grungy it already looked you know pretty grungy and aged before but I just wanted to blend it in with the color scheme of my page. So it's ready to glue down and um, there you can see how I attach my blender with the washi tape. And I found these little um, kind of like shaped paper clips in my stash from my scrapbooking days and I'm trying to pick which one I like better. Um, I thought the circle was maybe too repetitive with the red circle I had there, so I decided to go with the square clip. And then I'm just playing with the positioning where to put it. So a lot of um, journaling is just intuitive. You just play with colors and placement. And this is a piece of embossed cardstock that I had sprayed a different day with um, different inks and distressed it and I thought it would add some nice contrast to the red to sort of help that card stand out a bit more. Playing with that placement some more. So and um, inking the edges of that um, paper I just cut. And then, yes, we're going to glue it down. So here's the Eileen Tacky. Putting lots on there so it sticks well. And then probably my glue stick. Oh, no, I don't use my glue stick. I use, oh, some glue dots for the metal clip so that it stays on there. Now my glue stick to spread out the Eileen's Tacky. 
and just plop it down. I try not to be too precious about where things go. It's, you know, it's supposed to be grungy, but I do like things to look balanced. And as I'm looking at this page, I feel like there's a lot of red on the left-hand side and there's two elements of red and I really feel like I'm gonna need some red on the right-hand side. Yeah, so there I'm pointing to the right hand side, it looks kind of lonely. So this is some more of that um, thin brown craft paper. Uh, it was one of the prints I had done off camera by using that um, jelly plate, pulling off those little gold flakes. So I'm just playing with the proportion and the shape. Here's that black paper, the black and red paper. I liked it, but I thought it was too, it competed too much with the main image. So I didn't use it, I just used this plain red strip and again using uh, just a matte medium on the back of the craft paper on the background paper and then burnishing it down and then using more matte medium on top to really seal it in get all those bubbles out background paper the edges were quite stark so I just used some more brown distress ink to um, ink up those edges make it look a bit uh, grungy I like how you can see the loose leaf um, paper like the lines of it um, I just think that's kind of fun then I use some gold ink to add a bit of uh, glitter and color to the edges so here's a close-up and I'm not quite happy with that eye, so I'm going to zhuzh it a little bit with this Faber-Castell extra small uh, pit pen. So I'm just using that to outline the eye. And uh, the iris and then the pupil, and I make sure I leave a little section for the reflex. And while I'm there, I decide that the lips need a bit more definition. So I'll use the image itself as the guide, and I'm just highlighting where the lips end. And I'm really not happy with that black spot in the middle of her lip. It looks like a cold sore. So and I, was, I think I decide to um, try to... Uh, fix that up. First I'm putting some eyelashes on there. Not too many. I don't usually do a lot of eyelashes, um, but felt like she she needed it. So to fix up that black spot, I used some of that PBO paint, but it's translucent so it won't cover the black. So I used some opaque turquoise craft paint and just a very, very fine brush. Just a detailed brush. Just filling in that that black hole on her lip, trying to get it um, opaque. And above the lip line, there's a little bit of black, so I try to fill that in too, and I try to blend that in to the rest of the face with my thumb. So I'm trying so it's not too stark because the image transfer is iridescent, and this craft paint is opaque so I'm just using a bit of water to blend the edges of that now and still using just a bit of water to blend the edges of that craft paint then I use the iridescent PBO paint to go over top the craft paint dries pretty quickly so it's pretty much dry at this point and I just fill in her top lip mostly and then the bottom lip I do just a little bit of um, highlight around the edges to give it a bit of dimension. And looking back at her eye, I feel like her iris needs a little bit more color. So I'm gonna add some of that PBO paint to her eye as well 
Again, this is a very, very fine brush. And I add it to everywhere except um, obviously on the pupil and I leave a little reflex area for that background white to come through. So it's not a stark white reflex, but it's lighter than the rest of it. So that's my page pretty much finished. And um, I had a lot of fun making it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And um, there's an overview and then a quick close up of just her face. And I really appreciate your time. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me. Have a great day and enjoy creating. Bye now.